With the release of Return to Arkham, I decided to take a look back at the entire Batman Arkham series and pick out what I think are the best audio recordings. If you watched my last Bioshock video, you know that I've been looking at the most heartbreaking stories from the series. Why not give the same treatment to the Arkham games? Because in a game where most of the characters are serious and brooding, the moments when you see the more emotional side of these iconic characters really draw you in. Here are my top 5 most heartfelt audio recordings from the Batman Arkham series. The man who was once Harvey Dent believes himself to be bound by chance. His insistence on making every decision dependent on his iconic coin makes him unpredictable. However, his very dependency on the coin itself defies his philosophy. Constantly referring himself as two separate people, Two-Face is devoid of an identity. At least, that's what it seems like. Of course, not everything is what it seems to be in Gotham. Hello, Harvey. Are you ready to talk? Leave us. We don't want to talk. Not to you. I am going to give you a simple choice. This is your coin. Is it? Why should I trust you? It was your father's, correct? You know every inch of it. When you close your eyes, you can feel it, can't you? Give me it. Please. Do you believe that this coin determines the fate of your world? I, however, believe that your condition has always been present. It was there before you were attacked, and it is still there now. You probably had headaches. Your wife found you unpredictable. Scary sometimes. Give us it! I'm going to throw the coin in the air. If you let it fall, I will do whatever I can to cure you. I will help you become the man you used to be. Or... If you grab it, I will let you loose in Arkham City. And I will tell you what Catwoman is doing right this second. I can't decide. You have to. At this moment, Catwoman is preparing to steal the contents of the safe in your old campaign office. The bitch. We need to stop her. And you may. Goodbye, Mr. Dent. In the DLC of Arkham City, you can play as Catwoman in between the main missions of the story. Selina retains moral ambiguity, being neither a villain nor a hero. She looks out for herself and claims to only do things if it benefits her. Her attitude towards the people in the city makes her seem very cold. However, her actions prove to be more than generous if looked at closely enough. Being able to play as her adds to her character as well, since you hear her thoughts as you make your way through the city trying to get Two-Face's fortune. There is more than enough sympathy for her, being that she is the most relatable of the characters in all of the Arkham games. Tell me, what would you do if I let you go? Attempt to escape, contact the Batman. Why would I contact him? It's his fault I'm in here. Is it? I believe you would have escaped if greed had not got the better of you. He was actually in the process of rescuing you, was he not? I didn't need his help. Or any man's, it appears. Your relationship with Batman, would you call it close? Me and the brooding one get along just fine. But you want more. <laughs> but you can't trust men, can you? What? Look, he's spoken for. He must be. How else could he resist all this? You're both very similar, aren't you? A shared disregard for the law, a belief that you are doing the right thing, and a similar taste in attire. But beneath the surface, there is a weakness. You don't know anything about him. And neither do you. He hasn't confided in you because he doesn't trust you. And it hurts, doesn't it? Do you love him? No! Soon you will not have to worry about the Batman. Steal what you like, do what you must in a futile attempt to steal his heart. You will fail. After the events of Arkham City, Harley Quinn, the usual happy-go-lucky lady at the side of the old clown Prince of Crime, showed more hostility after the death of the Joker. Her DLC in Arkham City gives a preview of a slow descent into the cold-hearted person she appears to be in Arkham Knight. With such a dependency on her pudding, 
Harlan Quinzel's sanity solely depended on how the Joker treated her, and without her Mr. J, without her love, she was more lost than ever. While most of the villains are driven by their own greed and lust for power or by insanity, Victor Fry's motivation is given to him by his desperation to develop a cure for his wife Nora. Being the cold-hearted person he is, however, he cares little for anything other than his dear wife and will put anyone that opposes him in his mission into a deep and cold slumber. His arrogance and overconfidence are what led to his arrest by the caped crusader and are parallel only to his anxiousness for always having his wife close by. The best example for this can be heard in the audio recordings between him and fellow Dr. Hugo Strange in the second installment of the series, Arkham City. Have you ever seen a flower die? Watched something that was once so beautiful, so full of life, collapse and rot from within? You refer to Nora's illness. It seems like yesterday when I first found her. It all happened so quickly, suddenly, I was losing her. Did you see Kent? What about your employer, Gothcorp? I hid it from them. Diverting resources from Gothcorp's research in an attempt to find the cure. But in the end, I failed. Time was running out. I knew that if I was discovered, Nora would die. Why take that risk? Do you know what it is to love someone? To really love them? No. Nora was all I could think of. I reran the diagnostics, re-examined every detail from every angle, certain that I had missed something. I cursed myself for being so blind, so stupid. Surely there was a cure. I just needed more time. I had worked without sleep for a week. My needs didn't seem important. Sleep didn't matter. Food didn't matter. It was only her. I looked at Nora, and I told her that I loved her. She told me there was nothing I could do, that I, we, should just accept fate. She smiled her beautiful smile as she said it. I promised to cure her, and then I pressed the button. You cryogenically froze her, keeping her on ice, so to speak, while you worked on a cure. It broke your heart, but now you had all the time in the world. For those that haven't played the last installment of the Arkham series, this will contain some spoilers. The final game retells the story of a death in the family and the under the hood arc of the comic books in a different setting. Jason Todd, the second Robin following Dick Grayson, was murdered by the Joker several years before the events of the game. Though there aren't any real scenes of Bruce interacting with the people he took under his wing, there is a strong sense of trust and loyalty in the Bat family. While the series focuses on its villains more than the heroes, Arkham Knight shows the human side of Batman, and the interactions between the Bat family are the strongest than ever in this game. Jason, this is wrong! This is Chapter 
He left me. He lost you. And he mourned for you. Come home. I can't go back. You don't know what Joker did, Barbara. He hollowed me out and filled me back up with hate and... Jason, we can fix it. I can fix it! I know now what to do. I take all this pain, all this blackness, and I put it all in a bullet. And I put it right between Bruce's eyes. Joker's dead, Jason. You want revenge on the man who hurt you? You've got one shot. Come back to the manor. Let us help you. Don't let Joker win. How's Alfred? He misses you. We all do. The cloudburst is charged tonight. It's time. Someone put a gag on her. Anyone hurts her, they're a dead man. And there you have it. What do you guys think? Any contenders for the number one spot? It's easy to focus on the surface of these characters and see them as the villains they appear to be. Not to say they aren't, but seeing their more human side brings life to them, and I couldn't help but make this list to show that. If you have any suggestions for any other videos involving the Arkham series, leave them in the comments down below. Please be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it, follow us on Twitter at IllegibleMonster, and I'll see you guys next time.